Well, hello, Life Groups. I got to tell you, I am so grateful that you chose to watch a session on creating a testimony. Uh, my name is Craig Hall. I'm the pastor of Missions and Outreach. And this is one of the passions that I have, uh, is learning how to share the testimony because, you know what, we're commanded to do so. So I want to tell you a quick story. Um, back before I ever went to Mexico, and uh, I would be so scared about what people were going to do in Mexico. But, you know, God called me to go on a trip. And so I remember it was about the second meeting we were preparing to go to Mexico, and the leaders of that group said, and today we're going to work on sharing your testimony because when you're down in Mexico, you're going to share your testimony in the church. Uh, you're going to share your testimony uh, around a bunch of kids at a VBS. And, and I, just, I just was frozen. Even though I'd been speaking a long time, I'd been working in the schools for many years, and I talked a lot every day, the thought of sharing my testimony was really scary. And so one of the things I want to uh, encourage you by is that that is a normal and natural response. And actually, as I lead teams, I kind of look forward to the day when I get to say, hey, today we're going to start preparing your testimony and the, the fear on people's faces. Oh, no, what do you mean? And then I came to a realization, though. I realized that sharing your testimony is not me talking about me. It's about me sharing what the Holy Spirit has done in my life and what God is doing in his plans for me. And I thought, wait a minute, that makes sense. Why wouldn't I share what God is doing? You know, because if I catch a fish, I like to fish. So if I catch a fish, I can't wait to share it's like, hey, check it out. I'll take pictures, I'll share pictures, and then I'll tell everybody for weeks I got a really big fish. It's the same thing. I'm proud, I'm excited, and I'm just jazzed about what I got to be a part of. But why wouldn't I be the same when it comes to my, my testimony about what Christ has done in me? So that's really the heart behind what we're doing. But uh, if you have those papers from the navigators. I encourage you to get those out now. And if you don't have them and you want to pause and go print them, go to the navigator's website and look up how to do your testimony real quick. You can do that. But in here, the scripture that they refer to, I'll read to you, is on your paper from 1 Peter 3.15. It says this, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. In other words, we are told you are now alive in Christ, you have a new identity, and now your job to go make disciples and tell everybody about this new hope you have. People are desperate to know why you are different. If you're really a follower of Jesus, people want to know how do you have peace in the turmoil? They don't necessarily want to know what you know theologically. They don't want to have you quote the Bible to them. They want to know, why does this matter? And why should it matter to me? Let me tell you one other quick story, and then we're going to get right into how we do a testimony. Um, I had the opportunity to go to these African islands called the Comoros. And I remember, like, this day came, and I was, I'd been praying through the book of Philippians, and I had an opportunity to spend six hours with a local non-believer, a Muslim. And I'm walking in this town, and, and I am the only Christian at the time. And there I am, and here's the Muslims, and I, I felt conviction, God saying, share your testimony. Because what I wanted to do was share the story of Jesus, but what's my inroad? I was wrestling with this. How do I get there? And it was very clear. The Holy Spirit was saying, share your testimony. And so I asked this man, his name's Abdurman. I said, hey, Abdurman, could I share a, a story of why I follow Jesus. And he's like, yeah, it'd be great. And so we walked down the road, and in my case, uh, I spent about an hour, and I walked through who I was as a, as a youth, the decisions I made, how I followed the world, but then I talked about how God encountered my life. And so we talked for an hour, and the cool thing was that he said, can I, can I share my testimony of why I follow, you know, Muhammad and his teaching? I said, yeah, sure. But see, as he shared, it led to the next step, which is what I was there for. I got to share now the gospel and how he could receive the gospel. And then, so six hours later, imagine talking six hours. We walked and we looked around. And then six hours later, we sat down and, and I walked him through the book of Philippians and talked about who Jesus is. Not who Muhammad says he is, but how, how, how he's described in the book of Philippians. But it was the testimony 
that open the door to the conversation, that open the heart to hear truth. So I just want to tell you the power of the testimony is that it's a story that nobody can argue with. You didn't feel that way. That's what Nobody's going to argue that. You didn't experience that. They might, but they aren't going to get very far. It's also, it's a setup for a conversation rather than an argument. Hey, can I just tell you why I have hope? Can I tell you all about it? So that's what we're going to talk about today is how do we do a testimony? What does it look like? How do we lay it out? So there's three big parts on your paper. It's laid out for you, but let's be real clear. We have three main parts we're going to focus on. The before, okay? The how, how did I come to faith? What does that look like? And then the final part is the after. Let me tell you just the, the, the summation of your testimony. Every time you share your testimony, the time you share, how much you share, how in-depth you go is really dependent on your audience, though. You know, in a group setting like your life group, really a 10-minute testimony is, is about pushing the limits. Honestly, about five to eight minutes is great. There's a lot of people in your group, perhaps. Uh, if you're one-on-one -on -one having coffee with somebody you're discipling, it might be an hour. And you might go into great in-depth about who you were because you've built a relationship. So don't think of this as, here's my testimony and it's only eight minutes ever or only ten minutes and that's it. No, use your audience discretion. And I'll just throw this out there too. Who you're talking to matters about what you share. If you're at a, a classroom of children, it's probably not appropriate to share perhaps some of the things that are part of your testimony for that audience. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's audience appropriate, it's time appropriate, it's group size appropriate, but it's your testimony, and there's three key pieces we're going to focus on. So the first one, let's talk about before. Before is very simple. Who were you before Christ? And, and the, the saddest one is always the person who grew up in the church, and they said, I don't really have a story before Christ. I've always gone to church. That's the story we all want our kids to have. <laughs> That's the story I want to have. Your story, if you're that person, that's a beautiful story because you were, you were brought up in the knowledge of, of Jesus Christ and the truth, and hopefully you're following him because of that. But And if your story, though, is, man, I was not following Christ. That's my story, personally. I was not following Christ. Then you get to tell that story, too. But here's the deal. Before means before you surrendered your life to Christ, Ephesians tells us, and we're doing that study right now, that you were dead. You were dead in your sin. So what we're talking about is, what was life like before? And you say, well, I'm not really sure, or I have a whole lot. So you make a list. But here's what I want to tell you. Of the three things we're going to talk about, before, how, and after, this is the smallest piece. Most people want to spend 20 minutes talking about all their sin and one minute talking about how awesome God is. Let's reverse the script, okay? Let's figure out how we can hone in who I was. So who was I before? Write down some key things. And it gives you some, some things to help you think about this. What were some of the things that you felt were needs? So one of mine was, I felt I needed money. So I was living for as much money as I could get. That was my goal. You can talk about what, what were your goals, perhaps. The other thing it says here is, um, what solutions did you try that didn't work? If yours was perhaps uh, you were seeking after fame, maybe you were seeking after drugs or relationship, you were looking for an identity of the world and all you found was emptiness. You can talk about those pieces. Some of you will talk about loss of family members and the hurt and the pain. Some will talk about divorce. Some will talk about things that were done to you and some will talk about things they did to others. That's who you were before. It's very simple though, but don't glorify your sin in this process. Talk about it matter-of-factly. This is who I was, is the key word, was. So let's talk about the how, though, okay? Because this is the part that people are often asking. How did you become a follower of Christ? So now I get to talk about how, how God, in his, uh, his desire to have relationship with me, how he reached into my life. And so I mean, you might talk about a time that somebody invited you to church. You might talk about a time privately that you felt, wow, God was speaking to me. It might be through a circumstance, again, a loss of a loved one or a pain that you went through where all of a sudden God got a hold of you. It might be that you were in a church sitting. It might be in the life group you're in now or another group of people who were pouring or maybe just one day you were standing there in the line and ordered a coffee and you bumped into somebody and all of a sudden you start talking and you sit down and, 
and all of a sudden God reveals himself to you through some person. How did you come to it? So that's part of the story is what was God doing in your life that brought an awareness to you that he's real? And the second part, and it talks about here, is how did you trust Christ with your life? For some it was, well, I called my friend over and we prayed together and I just poured out my life. And at that moment, I just felt like, boom, I know I'm God. I'm for God now. Like, he's in me. I'm for him. And I surrendered everything. Some of you, you might even say, you know, God was so powerful in my life that I was actually a smoker and I quit. Because of the power of God, I've never smoked since. And it was a moment. Others, it might be, you know, it was kind of this process over many years. But every time I I had this, this heartbeat of God was active in my life. And so I know I'm a follower of him today. And talk about how you know. I know because I have this weird thing that goes on in my life. I care for people. Like, I, why am I caring for people I, I didn't used to? And really, that leads into the after. So let me review real quick. Before, who I was. How was I separated from God? What were the things I was seeking after? The how. How did I come to faith? What did that look like? And it's different for some of you. Some it was a prayer, remember. Some of you, it was this this just constant God bringing things into your life. But that transitions into what should be the biggest piece. So if you're tracking with me, before, let's say two minutes. Let's say how about two minutes. But let's spend the next four to five talking about what God is doing in your life. Because that's what people want to know. Is this real? Do I really feel this presence? How do do I have hope? How do I have this this thing that's happening that despite my circumstances, I still still trust and I still have faith? And so it talks about, uh, in your sheet there, the number one says, give an example of how Christ met your needs. Some of you have a story of God providing financially in a way that can only be God. And some of you, You have a a story about how God would bring people into your life at just the right time to comfort you. And some of you have a story of how uh, you were challenged to give, and when you did, there was peace that came over you, even though you spent more, perhaps, gave more than you could afford. Some of you have that story. Those are evidences where it talks about how did did he meet your needs. There may also be those times when uh, you just, you can't explain it. But it's kind of like the woman at the well, and if you go back and look at the story of this moment where Jesus tells her everything about herself, and she goes back to her town, and it says that many came to believe because of her testimony. And all she did was pour out how this guy Jesus told, him, told her about all the things she did, and there's no doubt it's, it's him. This is the Messiah. And so for you, I I would encourage you to make that the focus of this. The second, uh, number two says, end with a sentence to the effect that you know that you have eternal life with Christ. And I can't emphasize this enough. I've spent time, and I've talked about who I was before. I've spent time talking about how I came to faith, what that journey was like for me. But what I want people to leave with, the last thing I say is, I know I have hope in Christ for my eternity. That he took care of all of it. He erased my sin. He washed me clean because of his blood. And I have all faith in him that I don't have to worry about my eternity anymore. That's where, that's why I have peace. That's why when when trouble surrounds me, I have peace. The joy of the Lord is my strength because I go, man, this world's beating me up, but I I have joy. It's okay. Like it hurts. I'm not going to say we don't have emotion reality, but but I see beyond that because I know that the, the hope that awaits me, the joy that awaits me in heaven will far exceed this temporary life of mine. So I want to make sure people know that. And I always like to say this. When I'm sharing a testimony, my goal is not to persuade someone into the kingdom of heaven. My goal is not to win an argument. My goal is to simply give glory to God for what he's done in me. And the cool thing about when you do that is that those who are listening, if they have ears to hear, if God is calling them, or if they're, they're going to ask you questions. So I wanna, I'm going to end with just a couple thoughts here. So please take a look at those notes, though, and follow through. But let me, let me give you this. 
The purpose of your testimony is to make sure people know that you're a follower of Jesus. The purpose of the testimony is to open up a door of relationship so they have a window into your heart. And the third one is to open conversation. Honestly, what will happen is out of this, if I share my testimony, I like to just ask the next question, do you have any questions? See, that's a very safe thing to ask somebody rather than saying, are you ready to follow Jesus now? Or, or to say, what do you know about the Bible? Or what Bible questions do you have? Just say, do you have any other questions? Because the purpose of it was to introduce them into the true living God, the only God who can save. So use that as your platform to build relationship. And ultimately, this is about discipling others. So what I want to encourage you in is use your testimony as the bridge to discipling. Share your testimony often. Get comfortable with your testimony. Know what your story is. And there's lots of versions of it. Some are shorter. Some are, you know, some are long. Some are short. Some you've got two minutes. Hey, tell me about Jesus. Okay, I go fast. And some you have, get to sit down. And you get to share. But let it be the opening to what God is doing, and then God will take it from there because ultimately it says in Scripture that it's the Spirit testifying. That's who's doing the testifying. You're speaking on behalf of the Holy Spirit in you, testifying the goodness of God. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this form. I want you to go through on your own and just start working on your testimony. Get those segments clear. Let the focus, though, be on the after, the, how God is transforming you now. And then what I would encourage you to do in your life group is begin opening your time or spending at least one person over the next several weeks to share your testimony. See, the only way you're going to share it is to start. You can write it out, and, and what will happen is it will go in your pocket. And most people are pretty nervous the first time. But see, when you share it around a group of people that are already believers, I love that conversation. In fact, when we, when we travel to Mexico, the first thing I do when we get anywhere is I say, hey, tell me your testimony. Let me hear. I want a window into how God is active in your life. That's what we're doing here. It will build relationship in your group as you share your testimonies. It will also help you to get over the fear level of sharing what is the greatest story on earth, God's story, right? It's his story not yours, right? So keep that in mind. So I wanna, I'm going to pray for your group real quick, and then I'll close and encourage you to go out, give this a shot, and start practicing. So let's pray. Father God, I thanks for the, thank you so much for the group of people who would sit together, not only to be challenged, uh, to challenge each other, to love each other, but to figure out how can I begin this process of sharing my testimony so that I can disciple others. God, I pray over this group uh, that is watching now. I pray that they would be empowered by your spirit. They would celebrate the goodness that you are in their lives and they would be confident to share their testimony uh, from now until the last day when you call them home. Uh, we give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you guys. Have a great time and enjoy sharing your testimony.